Hey there, if you struggle with Lightroom and you feel like it's just a hot mess of a system, I'm gonna show you my simple system for importing images into Lightroom, how I keep them organized while I edit them, and how I export them so that they are ready and organized and quickly exported so they can go on their online gallery. So I don't know if you've seen this or not, but I did another video on our YouTube channel about culling and my process within Photo Mechanics. So basically, um, I shared tips about culling, but I also shared the folder and subfolder breakdown of how I organize my images after they're culled. And so you need to actually go watch that video so you understand how we got to this place of having a parent folder and organized subfolders of culled images that are now ready to be imported into Lightroom. So go watch that episode if you haven't already. If you have watched it and you're ready for part two, we're gonna dive in right now. So if you watch the other video, you've already seen this, but basically this is the five-star folder full of um, categorized, sorted, keeper images that I'm going to eventually edit and deliver in a final gallery. Um, the XMP files are just something that attaches from Photo Mechanic. It's just a simple small text file, but if you scroll down, you can see the actual raw files here. So I'm gonna take this folder and now I'm gonna import it in to Lightroom. So I'm gonna click import and there's some things to pay attention to. So first of all, you wanna make sure you have add selected because this is gonna, this is gonna add photos to the catalog without moving them or duplicating them somewhere else. A lot of people get really stuck here. They start off copying things as a DNG and then they're super confused. There's no need, in my opinion, there's no need to move them, copy them, or create a copy as a DNG. Let's just add them in where they are, where they're currently living and not get confused about it. And you're going to copy them to your catalog, your current catalog. Now that's a whole nother video talking about catalog organization. And that is not something you wanna learn from me because I basically just have one catalog a year and then I swap it out. When you are going to this far, like right hand side, file handling, um, a standard preview, when you're gonna build previews, basically building smart previews is something that I do because I have an editor. So I want to build these previews now um, because I don't wanna to have to do it later and that's something I have to do in order to send a catalog of previews to her for her to edit. Then she sends it back to me, the edits are applied and I export. So I'm never sending raw files all the way to my editor. She used to live in Portland. But because I have an editor, I need to build smart previews. Standard previews works well for me. Remember, I've I've already zoomed into these in Photo Mechanic instantly, really fast. And so I don't really have a need to build one-to-one -one previews and zoom in to their full resolution because I already know they're clear. I already know that I love them. So I'm just gonna do standard and that's gonna save some time. Um, and so down here, I do not add any import onto my images. Um, I used to before I created the preset process, but that's not a need now. It's built into the preset process. Um, and so then now I'm moving on over to the folder. So this is my hard drive that I showed you in the finder window earlier. I'm going to click this parent folder with all the subfolders. Click include subfolders, that's really important. So this is the full cold wedding. You can see all my raw files all the way down to the end of the day. Now we're gonna import, I'm gonna click import and you're gonna see the process. So we're importing and what you're going to notice here uh, is that this subcategory, um, these subfolders are just constantly growing and it's eventually going to fill all the way up. And this is really important because when this is filling up this way, and I spoke to this in the other video, I love having subfolders, not just like four. Some people have pre-ceremony, ceremony, portrait, reception. And I used to do that, but now I have many more subfolders like bridal details, family formals, dances, toast, cake all the things that people could be searching for because the more subfolders I have, the less overwhelming the entire day is. So now we have everything loaded, all right? And so we're still building some smart previews up here, um, but I can go ahead and show you um, what my process is once we have imported everything. So something to pay attention to, um, which Ty pointed out, I, I actually have been doing this so long that I didn't realize this was an issue for so many people. But if you've never imported a parent folder with subfolders, you may have it show up like this, where you have like just bridal details like hanging out by itself. It doesn't have a parent folder. And so all you need to do is show, you're gonna right click, so control click, and go to show parent folder. Now when I do that, um, and I scroll down, everything's back where it is. But I only have one parent folder above this, so I only had to click that once. You may have to do that multiple times if you have within that hard drive folders that have more categories on top of it. So like if you, in that folder, you have weddings, seniors, engagements, and then within them, you have your a specific clients, and then within them, you have another parent folder. That layering of parent folders means you might have to click that option a few times to get it back to a place where it looks like what you see now. 
So now that everything's imported, we're still waiting on these smart previews, it's a lot of, a lot of raw files. Um, you may notice on my screen that these images are labeled, they kind of have like a red label. That is from the XMP file that was attached to the image from Photo Mechanic. When I labeled it red in Photo Mechanic, that's why it imported red here. So if I had used a starring system in Photo Mechanic and like rated them by stars, then these images will all have a star rating. So that's why they look red. I just want to explain that because if you've never used Photo Mechanic, you could be like, okay, so what does the red marking mean? It, that's just what it's from. So I don't care that they're labeled all red, but I do have a system within Lightroom that allows me to select the images that are the best of the best that I want to edit for my favorites folder, for my clients, and for the blog post. All right, so I actually have a pretty strategic or intense, whatever you want to call it, um, system for how I get my images edited, delivered, and blogged. I like to blog my images within 48 hours of the wedding. I have videos and episodes about this. You can go find them, it'll be super helpful. But basically what I wanna break down to you is, once I get these images into Lightroom, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each individual folder and I'm gonna just, I'm gonna decide, all right, that one would probably look on the, good on the blog next to this one. And I'm hitting the uh, number eight. You can hit whatever you want. I'm just labeling these green. And once I go through all these and I, I decide, okay, this is gonna be blogged, that would be blogged. Let's do this one. I'm gonna go through each individual folder and pick the images that I think are the best of the best. And these are the ones that I'm going to take special care of myself and edit those. So I'm gonna go through um, one more folder just so you can see. I'm just randomly selecting to save time. But let's say these are the best of the best of bride and groom. All right, so what I would do then after I go through every folder and I say, okay, these are the ones I wanna blog, I'm gonna to go to the parent folder again, and I'm gonna just view the green ones. And I'm just gonna edit these images that are for the blog. Then the really cool part about this organizational system is that you could go to a specific folder like bride and groom and you can see all the images, but you can see interspersed throughout the whole folder some, some green highlighted images. And those are the images that would be already edited. So for me, my editor is gonna get this catalog and she's gonna see the green labeled photos and she's gonna say, okay, I'm gonna sync this to that one and then I'm gonna sync this to all these, then I'm gonna sync this one to those and she's gonna do all these synced edits and if you are editing yourself, you can go back and just do syncing. So the reason why this is so important and I could talk about this forever, is because if you dive into a bride and groom folder that has hundreds of images and you start from the very beginning, you're just going straight through, that is so boring and it's so miserable Edit the ones that make you come alive first, the best of the best, the things you're proud of, and have a marketing system attached to it. You're gonna blog it fast, you're gonna get it to them quickly, you're gonna send them to vendors, whatever. There's a whole video about that. When you do it this way, coming back and syncing then becomes a race in my mind. Like, I know that this image is in very similar light to all these. I bet you I could batch sync those and just tap the plus button and the minus button and get those exposures right and be done. So when you have a system like this, whether it's an editor or whether you're editing yourself, it is very easy to get on a roll and speed up your editing simply because you've done the hard work first. You've edited pieces of the day throughout the whole wedding day and then you just have to go back and edit everything to match to those first edited images that are your favorites. But now let's say that we're ready. Let's say everything is, is edited and we're ready to export. All right, so first things before you move on to the exporting process. So what I do is I have a subfolder, like template folder, just of empty subfolders. I, I talk about this in the previous um, episode where I talk about culling. So I'm just gonna go back to that folder on my desktop and copy and paste all of those empty subfolders. So here they are. Basically there's there's nothing in them. It's just a folder so I don't have to retype and remake all these folders. Why would I do that? Like just save this as a template, nothing in the folders, and just copy and paste that every time you get to this part of your workflow. You could basically have, this is unedited RAWs, these are edited JPEGs, these are culled RAWs um, that went into Lightroom. So that's kind of the structure of the folder. So I'm about to export these subfolders into the edited folder and I have the folders ready and waiting for them. All right, so now that we're in Lightroom, you do have to export subfolders individually. I'd highly recommend doing it this way. There is a way that you could export them automatically back into their original folder that they're in, but then you have your RAWs and your edited JPEGs in the same folder, and it's just a mess. So this is easy, just click Bridal Details, Command A, selecting all of them, Export. Um, I have actually never used this, but Ty said it's important. So if you choose a folder later, it will always make you choose a folder. I normally just go to a specific folder, but I think it's a smart move to do this so that you never accidentally export into a folder you didn't mean to, and then you're like, where did all those go? So um, that's important. 
file renaming. So I prefer um, custom file name and then original file number, but um, there's different reasons and different ways to do it. So I, I could do it this way, but I have run into my R6 um, duplicating, after it hits a certain number, duplicating file um, names. So like uh, something from the beginning of the day and an image at the reception can be duplicate image or yeah image names. So it's a little frustrating. So one way that I could combat that is just go to sequence and I could do Tim uh, and Megan and then I could do like underscore um, details and then start a sequence. The reason why I need to do details in this is because if you don't do details, then every Tim and Megan is gonna start with Tim and Megan one in every single subfolder, and then you have all these images that are named the same thing. That can be problematic. So um, going further down, JPEG, sRGB, this is all, I never touch this stuff ever. Now that I'm using the R6, I don't really resize. If you are gonna resize, we, re we recommend doing like the long edge, and I, I used to do this for my Mark IV because my file sizes were so big, um, but with the R6, there's no way that I, I don't wanna shrink them any smaller, so I'm gonna leave that alone. Sharpen for screen, standard amount, and then um, you can do copyright only if you don't want your metadata. I don't know if you know this, but if you are like editing and you don't want people to be able to copy what you exactly did in Lightroom, they can do that if you don't take that off. Last but not least, image sizing, 300 DPI is important. Some people miss that, and then they wonder why their images are pixelated. So we're gonna export that, and we're gonna do that for every single subfolder all the way down the list, and then you're done. Yeah, some people get frustrated about this because they're like, I have to, export every single subfolder, but like if you have a template for your not, you don't have to create the folders, so fast. You're just changing one word on the file name and just boom, boom, boom. It takes literally five minutes um, and then you're done. And then your folder is ready and prepped to be uploaded, uploaded to the gallery. Now, if you're wondering, oh, Caitlin, what do you do about the web? Um, I actually prep my images in Blogstomp. Now, there are so many other ways to do this. Blogstomp is actually a little bit outdated, but it still works for us, so I haven't switched anything else. Um, but Blogstomp basically takes images and preps them and sharpens them and resizes them and can actually rename them for the web and so I do that all through kind of a third party system. I don't worry about that in Lightroom. We realize that this is not extraordinarily revolutionary but um, I will say if there's just one thing that you're not doing that you wanna try, it's worth it to try. And so I'm, I will gladly break this down for all the people that we have seen struggle with Lightroom over the years and really not know how to handle the program. And if you get out of control with your organization, then Lightroom does become a bit of a monster and it's a monster that you've created unknowingly. So I hope we can save you from creating a monster within your Lightroom catalogs. Um, and if you want more information about this or you have questions about this, um, and this was extremely helpful, I, I wanna hear about it in the comments because it fuels uh, content that comes in the future. So thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching. If you have not liked and subscribed, you should because there could be another episode that comes out with even more information. I don't want you to miss it. So I will see you next week. Thank you for watching. See you later. Bye.